What is going on everybody and welcome back to another JavaScript basics tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the for loops in JavaScript. We're going to cover the for each loop as well as the regular old bland boring for loop. So uh, with that, let's get into it. So where we left off, we created this blob object, the blob object, if you will. And we showed how we can kind of work with it and manipulate it in the console. But we still have yet to have seen why, you know, Syntax was saying, hey, these are going to be so much better than using functions and just scripting up a bunch of blobs. This will be better, I promise. Now I'm going to show you why, because of how easily we can create new blobs uh, and get them to do things on the canvas. So to start, uh, I'm going to get rid of this line. And I'm going to copy and paste this line that ends in a semicolon, I swear. Uh, we'll copy that. We will paste, paste. Uh, I didn't mean to paste four, but that's okay. We'll do all four. Uh, we'll do uh, one, two, and three there. We will do red. Uh, we'll do blue here. And we'll make this one orange. So now we've created these four different blob objects. Now I'm sure some true programmers are crying that we've done it this way and don't worry we'll fix this in a little bit with another for loop but for now we're going to keep it this way uh, and then what we're going to do is we want to add these to some sort of container and the container that we're going to use is an array so we're going to go up to the very top and we're going to just create a new array uh, that will house the blobs for us so I'm going to say let, and we're going to call this blobs, and that's going to be equal to a new array object, semicolon. And then now what we can do is we can keep pushing the blob objects into an array. So an array is like a list. It's just, um, in this case, an array can take on many different shapes. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to have it be one dimensional uh, and just contain the blob objects. So coming on down here, uh, we want to add these blobs to the array. Now the way that we do that, the syntax to do that, is simply to say blobs.push, and we want to push the thing that we want to that array. So in this case, new blob. And then we're just going to do that uh, with the other three. So do, do, do. And then one, two, three. Uh, I just realized that I said one. I guess this could be, we could call it zero because we're programmers and we meant to start at zero. That was the plan the whole time. So now, uh, now blobs has, this blobs array has four uh, total blob objects within it. Now then the next thing that we want to do is let's just create a function and we're going to call this canvas draw. And this function is going to draw to the canvas these four uh, blobs. But the first thing we're going to do before we do any actual drawing is we need to clear the canvas. So what we want to say is context dot uh, clear rect. And don't forget context is in reference way up to the top uh, of this canvas dot get context 2D. That's what that's in reference to. So context.clear rect, and we clear from 0, comma 0, and we clear all the way to canvas.width to canvas.height. Awesome, semicolon. Now, um, once we've done the clear rect, now we want to draw all of the blobs that we know about. Now, the for each loop is super useful for this. We could, we could use a for loop here. Uh, but I'm going to use a for each loop. And the way that we're going to do that is basically you're going to say the object that you want to iterate over. Now, obviously, this object needs to be iterable. Uh, so in this case, blobs is the array that has four blobs. But we're going to say blobs dot for each. And then we want to do this thing. Now, in this case, the thing that we want to do is a couple of things. So instead, because every time we draw a blob, we actually want to move the blob. Now, we could, in theory, if that was always going to be true, rather than having the draw, like every time we draw, we could at the end of draw run a move, like every time we drew it. But later, 
like we that might not be something we want to do every single time we draw it like maybe the blob holds still for some reason so we don't necessarily want that so that's why in this case you don't always have to you know do a for each uh and then run some sort of function but in our case that's what we want to do so we're going to say function and then the parameter to this function will be just object now this could be anything it could be blob we're just giving a temporary name to each of the elements in blobs so each element in the blobs is a blob object so you could call it blob you call it obj you could call it uh this like it, it really doesn't matter i'm going to say just object because that's what we're, we're just iterating over objects and then like all functions we've got the curly braces and then here we do the code that we want to do so we've referred to every object as obj so then we would say obj dot draw and then we want to run an object uh, dot move after we've drawn it because we do in this case want all of our blobs to move around so there's canvas draw now finally we just need to set interval this canvas draw so set interval and in this case like our for each our interval is actually just going to be a function and in this case it's just an empty function but all we're going to say is uh can well actually <laughs> we don't this time we actually could just pass um all we want to do is canvas draw we don't want we don't really need anything else so that should be fine so actually we could do canvas draw every 10 milliseconds semicolon so so uh cool let's run it see what happens not updating um let me think about this set interval the thing we want to do and then update it every 10 seconds why wouldn't that work i would expect that to work and surely it wouldn't no nope. okay um news to me I, my entire use case of set interval has always been passing a function but i guess in this case and that starts to make a little more sense why it was why it made those functions that you loaded local so when you do a set interval i guess it just pulls in this and then runs it interesting uh cool like i said i'm a javascript noob I don't know why you guys are still watching. So anyways, um, cool. So now we've got that working. And we did it with the for each loop, which I think makes a lot of sense. Like a lot of times you're just going to simply, you're going to be iterating over an iterable and doing things with the things as you iterate over it. So for each just makes a whole lot of sense. I really like that. Um, now, the next thing we want to do is rather than making blobs this way, this is kind of a terrible way to do it. So instead, we can use another for loop and make our blobs. Now, the way I want to do that is with your typical boring bland for loop. And the way these work is it's for some, you know, condition, we do a thing. Okay, so it's like an if statement almost. Now, the thing that we want to do is we're going to just simply blobs dot push and we're going to push a new uh blob object uh and in this case for now we'll fix this soon but we'll just pass green and then 25. um okay and then i'm going to delete all of this so <clears throat> So in this case, we just need to set up the you know parameters for this for loop. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to say let i is equal to zero. So the first parameter just says, okay, we're starting i as zero. Then we're saying i less than five. This means while i is less than five, we're going to run this for loop. And then the third thing that we're going to pass here is i plus plus. So every time this for loop runs, we're going to add one to i. And effectively, all this is doing is running this loop five times. So if I go up to the tippity top here and I specify a new constant, and I'm going to say const uh, blob count equals 10, let's say. Now I can take blob count, come down here, and, ra and just replace five with that. And then now we're going to get 10 green blobs 
And now that we've done that, we only have to change it in that one location and the for loop handles the rest and then the for each loop handles the rest. So like with functions, you would have to like copy and paste in like three different locations. It would be stupid. So, so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, run this. Make sure it works as intended. Beautiful. So we got all these green blobs bouncing around. Okay. So the next thing is they're all green. We, we want to make them uh, a little more colorful. So I'm going to come up to the top and what we're going to say is const colors equals a new array object semicolon and in this case we are going to have just just we're just going to write out some colors here so we're going to say red uh orange yellow shoot <laughs> green blue purple uh I'm out of colors. Um, black, pink. All right, great, pink, <laughs> pink. Cool, that's enough. So, okay, so now we've got colors, and then what we wanna do is actually just pick a random color. Now, I could be wrong, but from my very short internet research, I did not see a, like a, just a random choice option uh, for JavaScript. So instead, the way we pick a random thing is a little hinky, but that's okay. So I'm going to come into our for loop and I'm going to say um, let, and then we're going to say let random color is going to be equal to, and we're going to say colors, and then we're going to grab an index. And all we want to do is grab a random index from colors in order to grab a random color. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to say math.floor. Basically, this just always rounds down. So we're going to say math.floor of math.random, open and close parentheses, don't forget those, times uh, colors.length. So what is actually happening here? Let me just scroll out and then I'll highlight. Okay. So all we're Again, all we're trying to do is just get a random index. That way, because our true goal is just pick a random color. And here we're saying math.random times colors.length. It's basically the exact same logic that we were using to pick a random starting point on our x and y axes. So all we're doing is we're just figuring out which, we're just gonna hopefully grab a somewhat pseudo random index of colors. Um, and again, math.floor because we want to round down. If we allowed it to round up, there's going to be times where the index will just be out of range. There won't be such an index, uh, and we don't want to deal with that. So now we've got random color. So now we can take random color and throw it into blob. And then we can run that. And now we can see we've got a nice assortment of beautiful colors of blobs bouncing around. And now... Um, let me think here. So the next thing is, uh, we, so we could make this all one line and just throw it into there. But in my opinion, this is quite ugly. Um, <clears throat> if I'm reading through someone's code real quick, uh, and I get to this line, I got to look at it for a second. I was like, okay, math that floor and it's a random times the length. Oh, okay. It's an, it's a random. And I'm sure if you've been programming JavaScript for a while and you see this line, it's like a probably a really common one. If, especially if I'm correct in my assumption that there's no such thing as random, just like, like with a lot of languages, you can just boom, random. And it just picks a random <laughs> and it's really simple. So in this case, um, probably what I would do is make another function and I would say random choice array okay um, and then in here I would just I would just basically copy this and then replace colors with array so this uh, and then R R and um, since we haven't returned anything with a function boom that's how you get a value from a function you just say return uh, so here we're gonna return a random choice from random choice. So now let random color can actually just be a random choice of uh, colors, semicolon. <laughs> okay, so now let's go ahead and run that and see if I screwed anything up because I probably did. Nope, 
Not very good random, though. Hence the pseudo-random. But it works nonetheless. Uh, cool. All right. So that's pretty much it. The only other thing I just don't like and I just really want to fix um, is the balls are still kind of bouncing around uniformly. Uh, so to fix that, I would just come up to where we define the x and y change and make that math.random because that's, that's going to be a random number between 0 and 1. So, <laughs> so it seems pretty fitting. You could just toss in math.random there and then we can rerun that. And that should be a little more, um, yeah, like a little more random where the balls like clearly aren't following a similar trajectory everywhere. Uh, the other thing you could do is like every time you hit a wall, you could reset things. So like every time you hit a wall, you could, um, so before you flip that number, get the current number, mm, I guess you would just reset the current number and then flip it, but you'd have to know if it was plus or minus. Anyway, maybe we'll add that later. Um, but yeah, you could do that too, like every time it hits a wall or something. But we're kind of getting beyond the scope of probably where I want to take this tutorial anyways in terms of getting that right. Um, uh, instead, I'd like to do other things like uh, getting input from the user and stuff like that. So um, I think that's what I'm going to focus on in the next tutorial. Honestly, I haven't even made the next tutorial, so I don't know for sure. But anyways, if you're enjoying this content, bada boom, bada bing, you can hit that beautiful blue join button to support the channel very much appreciated uh just went over about a hundred uh channel members that's awesome so anyway that's all for now questions comments concerns suggestions whatever feel free to leave them below otherwise i will see you guys in another video